The 33 is a biographical disaster survival drama film of 2015. The plot of the film follows a mining accident in which 33 workers get trapped underneath rocks and struggle to survive after a disaster strikes a copper and gold mine in Chile. Meanwhile, a rescue team works day and night for 69 straight days to save the seemingly doomed miners. The film starts with a prologue explaining that every year 12,000 miners die in mining accidents globally. In the next scene, a miner, Mario, is shown enjoying a retirement party of his friend in Copiapo, Chile. Mario has a beautiful wife, Caddy, and a younger daughter, Escarlite. Despite working tirelessly, Mario wants to work on off days as well as to earn for his family. So he asks his manager, Lucho, to let him work the next day. Alex is a younger miner seen at the party with his girlfriend, Jesse. His father, Don Jose, keeps asking him to join his friend's body shop and get out of the mining profession to support his girlfriend and their upcoming child, but Alex is reluctant to work there due to the low pay. Yanni, another miner, is seen trying to keep the peace between his two wives who argue about giving lunch to Yanni while he's leaving for work. August 5, 2010, many workers are seen arriving at the Mineral San Jose Mine, located in the Atacama Desert of Chile. Lucho shows the mine owner, Marco Castillo, a piece of broken mirror that he found in the mine. He explains to him that the mirrors are used to check the mountain shifts and the broken mirrors suggest that the mountain's internal structure is getting weak. But Marco pays no attention to it and asks Lucho to focus on pulling out 250 tons of material from the mine instead of worrying about the safety of the workers. Disappointed, Lucho leaves for work and introduces everyone to a new worker named Carlos Mamani. He then gives Gomez his retirement papers and congratulates him on his retirement, which will commence after two weeks. All the workers give Gomez a round of applause and leave for the mine on a truck. As the truck enters the mine, Carlos seems frightened and asks Mario about the entryways. Mario informs him that there is only one entry and exit way out of the mine. The truck goes deep into the mine, terrifying Carlos even more as it's his first time in the mine. Finally, after an hour-long journey, the crew reaches the machine shop that's 1,700 feet below ground, having a 90-degree Fahrenheit temperature. Lucho sets out to get some work done, but all of a sudden, he's distracted to see pieces of mirror lying on the rough stairs. As he takes a look above him, he's shocked to see a huge, non-ending crack in the mine. Meanwhile, Alex is seen telling his friend, Dario, about the job that his father wants him to do. Alex is worried and asks Dario for advice, but Dario is not stable mentally and physically to advise him wisely. Suddenly, the two of them are confused when they hear a weird sound. The scene cuts to Mario, where he's seen showing Carlos the rumble consisting of 1,200 ounces of copper and gold. All of a sudden, the mine starts to collapse and chaos prevails everywhere. As the mine breaks, Dario hangs from a cliff, begging Alex to save his life. Lucho gathers the crew and asks them to get on a truck quickly. Meanwhile, Alex is busy trying to pull Dario up and finally saves him. Lucho asks the driver to head down to the refuge instead of taking the route for the exit to prevent them from crushing under the rubble. On their way, they take Mario, Elvis, and Carlos as well. As the truck accelerates forward in full motion, Mario's devastated to see the mine shattering behind him. The crew from the other block crosses paths with the truck in their car, going in the opposite direction. Everyone on the truck screams at them not to go in the opposite direction, but to no avail. Suddenly, the truck hits the rubble, ejecting the passengers out forcefully. The car, on the other hand, is crushed by the collapsing mine, causing a huge explosion. After a while, Mario gains consciousness and starts coordinating to help aid the injured. He realizes that they are in the heart of the mountain that they've been wanting to reach for a while, and the only path inside the mine is completely blocked, trapping the miners inside. The news of the collapse of the mine spreads like wildfire. Alex's father immediately leaves for the mine to save his son along with Jesse. Caddy, who is at a football match with her daughter, is startled after finding out about the accident, just like Dario's sister Maria. Meanwhile, inside the mine, Lucho counts that 33 men are trapped and assures them that they can be safe in the refuge chamber. Mario refuses to sit in the refuge chamber waiting for help, but Lucho assures him that the refuge is the safest place where they can get in contact with the outside through the radio, feed themselves, and also patch their wounds. But Mario decides to climb through the ladders of the ventilation shaft, taking Alex with him. Meanwhile, the families of the trapped workers arrive outside the mine and are dejected to see the careless attitude of security officers. Maria takes a stand and questions the officers about the rescue teams that have still not approached the mines, motivating the other families to take their stand as well. 
In the presidential palace Santiago, the government officials are seen talking about the mind incident, making it clear that they have no obligation to interfere in the matters of a private mine. However, Lawrence Goldburn, Minister of Mining, suggests that they take measures to save the trapped. In the refuge, Lucho reaches the radio, only discovered that it's useless and non-functional. When a worker opens up the medical kit to patch the wounded, he finds it empty. On the other hand, Mario and Alex use all their strength to climb the ladder, only to find that there's no more ladder halfway through the ventilation shaft. While returning back, the mine faces a secondary collapse causing the debris to rush through the tunnel. The next day, Lawrence arrives at the mine, and his car is stopped by the workers' families. Maria demands answers and threatens to cause a riot if the trapped workers are not rescued. Lawrence inquires Marco about the protocol to save the trapped, but and Marco bluntly answers that in his 25 years of mining experience, no one has ever been saved from a collapse accident. Seeing the public's curiosity, Lawrence declares that the rescue attempts have been suspended as they can't risk the lives of the rescuers. Maria is enraged and slaps Lawrence on his face, causing havoc outside the mine. Meanwhile, Dario feels hungry, and without thinking about others, he utilizes the small quantity of stored food. On the other hand, Mario realizes that Lucho must have known about the incomplete ladders and failing stability of the mine and inquires him about it. All of a sudden, the miners start fighting over food. Mario blows off the steam and explains all the ways to exit the mine are blocked. He makes it clear that they're practically buried alive and must ration the food accordingly until they're rescued. Aware of the attitude of the mine owner, Lucho feels hopeless and expresses that the owner will never spend the money to dig them out. However, Mario is hopeful and tries to keep everyone's spirits high, becoming the leader of the miners. Seeing Lawrence talk about relinquishing control of the mine, the president replaces him with Andre Sauergarrett, the new chief engineer. Andre suggests drilling the mine from outside for eight days straight to reach the rescue chamber. However, he's certain that there is less than a 1% chance of finding the workers. On day three, Mario is seen dividing the food rations and distributing them equally. Meanwhile, the families around the mine gates jump with excitement to see the rescue teams approaching the mine with drill machines. Beneath the rubble, the miners are relieved to hear the sound of the drill machines and are hopeful that they'll be saved soon. On day five, Andre is exhausted after the drills fail to work on the hard deal right. Lawrence answers the growing question of the public by telling him that 10 drills are working 24 hours and that all measures are being taken to make contact with the trapped miners. Meanwhile, Dario feels restless inside the mine and is comforted by Gomez. Outside the mine, the public builds Camp Hope and takes refuge there, making tents to sleep in and a temporary school for kids. On day 12, the drills are about to reach the miners and everyone outside has their fingers crossed. Inside the mine, the workers are overjoyed and prepare to get out, but unfortunately, the exploratory borehole moves off target, disappointing everyone. Alex loses his cool and outbursts with despair, attempting suicide but is stopped by Mario who knocks some sense into him. Andre starts losing courage after working tirelessly only to gain nothing. On day 14, Carlos feels alone and heartbroken as he does not have friends. Mario assures him that nothing wrong will happen to him until he is there. Finally, all the food supplies run out and only one can of tuna is left. The crew eats it in despair, after which Dario apologizes to everyone for stealing from them in the past. He saved his share of cookies and offers them to the crew to repay for his sins. The shortage of food forces the crew to imagine their loved ones and their favorite food dishes. Everyone laughs their hearts out when Gomez hands in his retirement papers, declaring himself retired. On day 16, Lawrence is enraged after finding out that attempts to drill the borehole have been relinquished and a memorial is being planned for the miners. He fights Andre, asking him to keep on trying as the families of the miners have all their hopes in them, but Andre is sure that the miners must have been dead after exhausting three days of food supplies and enduring high temperatures. Lawrence is in tears seeing the families waiting for their loved ones desperately. Maria, who has developed a deep connection with Lawrence, thanks him for his efforts. Lawrence decides to learn from the mistakes and elucidates the second rescue mission to Andre. This time, if they aim to miss, the deviation of the rock will lead them to the refuge. At first, Andre is reluctant, but soon realizes that the plan might work. So the drilling starts in full swing. Meanwhile, inside the mine, the miner's health and spirits start to decline and Mario is distressed to see it. 
Finally, on day 17, the second exploratory borehole reaches the required destination and Mario is thrilled to see it. He starts screaming out of excitement, gathering everyone together to make noise and indicate their presence. Lawrence hears the noise through the borehole. The miners paint the drill bit with red spray paint and attach a note to it to announce their survival. Andre and Lawrence are in tears to see it and quickly announce the news to the families about the survival of their loved ones. Andre appreciates Lawrence for his efforts and determination. The miners are sent new food designed by NASA and clothing and television communication with the surface. The news about the epic quest of the miners to survive runs on every news channel. Andre realizes that it would take almost three months to rescue the miners one by one. And since some of them are bipolar and in depression, he fears that they might start killing each other. The miners get to video call their loved ones once a week, bringing a smile to their face. Caddy tells Mario that he has become a hero of Chile after displaying the best leadership skills in contending with suffocating heat and the need for food and water. She further tells Mario about a book deal that she's been offered and Mario asks her to keep it confidential. Several NGOs offer the families of the miners a huge amount of money so that their loved ones don't have to work for at least a year. Maria waits for Dario on the video call, but Dario refuses to talk. On day 50, Lawrence and the rescue team face much difficulty after the drill bit breaks inside the borehole. Meanwhile, inside the mine, the miners find out about Mario's book deal and start arguing with him for cutting them out of it. The president is worried that the millions of dollars spent on the rescue mission will go in vain, and he warns Lawrence to get the rescue completed as soon as possible, as the whole world is waiting to see it. On day 54, Dario has a heart-to-heart -heart with Mario and tells him that he's been mad at his sister for years after she abandoned him when he was a kid. Mario tells him to forget about the past and hug her once he gets out. Later, Elvis and Carlos get into a violent fight after Elvis calls him a thief for stealing his iPod. Mario stops the outburst of violence and berates them for fighting over petty things. All the 33 miners come together after Mario tells them that he didn't sign the book deal because he considers them his brothers. Finally, the drill bit is removed by the heavy-duty magnets imported from Brazil. Lawrence gets the fence down asking all the families to cross the mine gate. Lucho realizes that the drill will hit the steel beam, so he asks Lawrence and Andre to let the miners help from inside by doing a controlled explosion. At first, Andre refuses, as the mind is already crumbling, but Lucho tells him that it's the only way they can get out. Finally, the explosions are set in place, and the mine is exploding, clearing the way for the drill system to enter easily. A Phoenix capsule is designed to get the miners out one by one, after inspecting the mine from inside. Andre and Lawrence realizes that it could be dangerous, as 700,000 tons of debris can fall over the miners. But having no other choice, they decide to go on with the plan. On day 69, the Phoenix capsule enters the mine and Alex is selected to go first. As the capsule ascends a few hundred meters, it's stuck. However, after much tension, the capsule starts moving again and Alex makes it out. The public is overjoyed and Alex is elated to meet Jesse and their newborn baby. One by one, all the 33 miners are retrieved successfully. When Dario comes out, Maria is in tears and leaves the premises before she can meet him. Andre, who's been working for over two months, finally gets to meet his family. The rescue mission continues till the morning and Dario finally gets to meet Maria. He hugs her tightly, thanking her for not giving up. Finally, Lucho is the last person to be rescued. The film ends with an epilogue explaining that the San Jose Mining Company was not found guilty of criminal negligence and the miners were never compensated. The 33 survivors remain brothers till the present. This movie has a rating of 6.8 on IMDb. I hope you all like this video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.